Hey guys, this is Versatile from Project Phoenix Media. In today's video game tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up your Raspberry Pi 3, install RetroPie to your microSD image, and then basically emulate the quote-unquote NES Classic system, or whatever you want to do in a nutshell. So basically, here's my setup. I got Nintendo here. I got a bunch of different games on here. So I'll show you how to do uh, transfer your ROM images to your Raspberry Pi. Also how to do a little bit of scraping how to set up your save states, and also how to reduce your input lag. So there's a lot of different tutorials that I could have broken it out, but I'm going to try to do a real quick mini tutorial today. So let me go ahead and shut down the system. So I think it's going to press start here, quit, shut down the system. Great. So in terms of the hardware that you need, of course you need a Raspberry Pi 3. Of course you could do it with a 2, a 1, a 0 as well. You're going to need a USB keyboard. So here's mine. You're going to need a micro SD card. Preferable 8 gigabytes or larger. You're going to need a USB game controller. So here's mine. Nintendo with a USB adapter. HDMI cord. And then also a micro USB cable cord. If you go to the video description, I'll have a link to pre-made kits where you can get some of this stuff online. Or of course, you can get each of these parts uh, separately yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my micro SD card. And then what I have here is I have this uh, SD adapter. And I have a laptop connected to my TV here. So what I'm going to do real quick is show you the software that's required. And we'll switch the signals on my HDMI. And we'll get this party started. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so we're going to switch the input. And we'll get started. So... I'm using Windows 10 for this tutorial, so if you have a Mac or Linux, I don't really know all the software required, but hopefully uh, you guys can get by uh, pretty well here. Okay, so what we got is you need a micro SD card plugged into your computer, and then there's two programs that you need basically, or software files, I take that back. So the first one is you need RetroPie, the latest version at the time of this recording is 4.2, so in the video description I'll have a link. Basically, you go to retropie.org.uk, go to download, scroll down, get the image that you need. So in this case, you're doing Raspberry Pi 2 slash 3. Go ahead, click on it. It's going to download this image file. Secondly, what, what else you need is a Win32 Disk Imager. This is a program that will burn the ROM image to your micro SD card. And I'll show, uh, show you, excuse me, in action how that works. So go ahead, download, and install this program. Okay, so... What I have here on my desktop is I have a folder. When you first download that image file, it's going to be like a .image.gc. So using your favorite unzipper program, I just happen to use 7-zip as a free download. I have a link in the video description. You just go right-click, 7-zip, extract here. You could probably do the same with WinRAR, so give that a try if you wish. Once you have that, you're going to have approximately a 2.1 gigabyte image file. And that's what we're going to use to burn to the micro SD card. So if I bring up my program, Win32 Disk Imager, here you have your device drive. It's going to recognize what is your remo removable device drive. So here is letter F for my micro SD card. Click on the folder icon and navigate to your image file. So I'm going to go to my desktop, go to my folder here. Here's my image file, open, and then I'm going to say write. Writing to a physical device can corrupt the device. Are you sure you want to continue and say yes? So this will take uh, a while, you know, five, ten minutes, something like that. And then at the end of the process, once it gets 100%, uh, 100 excuse me, you'll be done. And then you can close the program and then you can eject your micro SD card. And then you can boot up the Raspberry Pi 3. So this is going to take a while. So what I want to do is I'm going to pause the video and we'll skip to the next section. I'll show you guys exactly how that works. Let's do this. Okay, so the write was successful. It took about five minutes or so. So what I've done is I've already ejected the micro SD card, put in my Raspberry Pi 3. So let's go ahead and switch the input here. And let's plug in the power and let's get started. So this portion of the video, you can get by without a keyboard. Uh, but I do have the keyboard plugged in just in case if we ever need to do anything uh, later on. But you can get by with the rest of this using your USB game controller. If you're interested in using like an Xbox controller or a PS3 controller, that's a slightly different tutorial. 
So maybe we'll touch upon that in the future. But for now, um, you can get by with a USB keyboard or your basic USB game controller as well. So what's going to happen is it's booting up the RetroPie script for the first time. It's going to expand the file system, do some more house cleaning, so to speak. Eventually, we're going to get to a screen where it's going to ask you to input your... Um, it's going to detect your game controller basically and ask you to input your, your mappings for all your different buttons. So depending on the controller you're using, you might have all the buttons, all the analog joysticks to configure what you need to do. If you're using a real basic game controller like this one or maybe a Super Nintendo or whatever, then I'll show you how that works for how to configure buttons that you don't have in the configuration file. So it makes a little bit more sense once we get there. But overall, RetroPie, I think it's a really badass system for emulating all your different game consoles. So right now I'm having a blast with the NES, of course. Okay, so it has detected my one gamepad. So I'm going to press down a button. So here we go. D-pad up, down, left, right, start, select, A, B. Now, for these other buttons, I don't have those on my NES controller, so I'm just going to hold down the letter A button and it will automatically skip it. So just keep on pressing it down and skip everything here pretty much is how that works. So you have a game controller, you don't have like these trigger buttons, you don't have these analog sticks, not a problem, just press down any button on your game controller, just hold it down and it will automatically skip it as not defined. So we're almost there. Okay, okay. So I think to uh, get past the OK, you just press your A button, for example, on your controller, and here we are. So here we go to HDMI as my audio output, and we're good to go. Uh, I probably did that because I pressed A too long and it went into this, this screen here. So this is the main screen that you get to. This is the RetroPie screen. So what I like to do when I first get, get into here is do a lot of different things. So first thing is, let's connect to your network. If you have an Ethernet cord, great, plug it in. If you want to do the Wi-Fi method for transferring the ROMs, which I'll showcase in today's tutorial, that's the quickest way. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go to Wi-Fi. This is where it's useful to have your USB keyboard, for example. So um, I'm going to connect to Wi-Fi network. Let's uh, connect to my network here, type in my password. Okay, it's connecting. And then we're good to go. Sweet. So I'm going to exit by pressing B and then press A on exit to exit out of it. Since we're here anyways, we might as well talk about how to reduce your input lag. So let me just go over that right now. Uh, it's pretty simple to do. So what you do is you go to configuration editor, go ahead and press A. And I don't really know it has to be A, but I'm pressing A on my game controller. That's what it works for me. So go to advanced configuration, press A or OK. Uh, configure Librito options. I probably butchered that, but that's okay. Press one or go okay. And then go to a zero. This is the top one. All slash retroarch.cfg. Press uh, okay. And then go down to where it says video driver. And here we're going to press A or select. And we're going to go to disk manx. So that's number one. And I found out that this one will help reduce your input lag. So if you're playing with the default options with the GL option, you might notice some type of input lag. So if that's the case and you don't like it, try messing around with the video driver and this works pretty darn well. So I'm gonna press okay and um, go to cancel, go to cancel, and then we're going back to the emulation station. Just go to cancel to all these guys. So that's that. And then last but not least, we might as well set up the RetroArch site. Don't forget it. So you go to RetroArch here. And what you want to do is we're going to set up the, um, some basic stuff here. So you go to settings and then go to saving. And no, sorry, that's not the option. Sorry. Um, we're going to go to configuration, save configuration on exit. Make sure you press A to make it on. Now we're good. So press B to go backwards. Now we're going to go to uh, input. Let's go to input hotkey binds. So on my particular game controller, we'll see that for the safe state, a plus and minus, that's just basically using the right D-pad and left D-pad, so we're good to go here. For the safe state, I'm actually gonna press down on my um, D-pad here, and then for load state, I'm gonna press up. So what's, what's happening is when you, when you launch the combination button for RetroArch, 
you can save on the fly, you can load on the fly, and I'll show you how that works uh, a little bit later in this video tutorial. And then also down here, go to menu toggle. So for menu toggle, I'm just gonna press the letter A for now. So what that means is when I press select and the letter A, uh, button A, it's gonna go into the retro arch menu, which is pretty cool. And then if I were to do like um, select down to save or select up, that'll be to load. And then if I do select right or select left, that's gonna change the save state slot from like zero to one to two or two to one to zero, for example. So that's how that works in a nutshell. If you wanna go ahead and mess around with video, you can go ahead and do that, set up your aspect ratio. We're not gonna do that right now. And then we're gonna to go to quit retro arch. And um, so that's that, right? So, so far we got the retro arch configuration. We got the input lag sorted out for now. We got your Wi-Fi connection. Um, if you wanna do the audio part to make sure you force the audio to your HDMI, you can do that as well. Uh, one other item that I have not done just to help so save some time is you should probably update your RetroPie setup. You don't have to do it you know, every once in a while. It's probably a good time to do it now, but I'm not going to do it because it takes a lot of time. But let me show you the steps of how it works basically. So you go in here. First you say update the RetroPie setup script. Once that is done, then go ahead and do update all installed packages. That's going to take uh, 10, 20 minutes, something like that. Once that is done, then you're good to go. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to skip it right now. If you guys are interested in how that updating process works, let me know. I'll make a dedicated video tutorial in the future. So I'm just going to exit that screen right there. Okay. So now we see that we're back here. We have no games, right? So what I'm going to do is let me go back on my laptop here, and I'm going to show you how to transfer games through the network method. If you want to do the USB method, it's real simple. Basically, you, uh, uh, you have a USB thumb drive. You make a folder called RetroPie. You plug that into your Raspberry Pi 3. Wait a while until it stops blinking. Unplug that USB thumb drive, plug into your PC, navigate the folder structure, and then you can copy your ROMs there. You know what, actually, let me just show you. I'll show you both methods. It's pretty simple. Okay, so let me just switch my input here. Okay, so let me just show you the USB method real quick here. So here's my thumb drive. Make sure it's formatted as FAT32. So you just make a new folder here. And you call it RetroPie, right? That's it. And then go ahead. You can disconnect that guy. And then what you can do is plug it in to the RetroPie or Raspberry. And then we'll see that it's blinking and then it sort of stops. So we're ready to meet all of the folder structure. So let's go ahead. Oops, I thought it was done. Let me just wait another 10 seconds or so. Okay, I think it's done. We'll soon find out. So you go back here. Okay, so now we plug it back in. Now I'll show you both methods. So you do this, right? And then uh, sometimes you might get this error, that's okay, just scan and fix. It doesn't take long to fix it. I don't know why it does that. Um, so it may do it for you, maybe not. So if we go into the USB thumb drive, we see RetroPie. We see that I made some folders already. Great, you go to ROMs. Here we see that uh, if I want to add stuff to the NES section, this is where I add my, all my game ROMs. So what I'm gonna do is, um, let me do this. I have a folder, there's some game ROMs here, so I'm gonna select all, oh, copy, and then go back here, and paste it into my USB drive. Okay, great, it's done. Go ahead, eject. So now what you do is just basically go ahead and plug it back into your RetroPie, Raspberry Pi, whatever, and then it's gonna start blinking, and then it's, it's just going to copy all your ROM files over, basically, right? So that's, and then once you've done that, once you go back into Emulation Station, you refresh it and you'll see your games. Well, let's say you don't want to do that. Let's say you want to do it through the network method. Let me show you how that works real quick here. So assuming your Raspberry Pi is already connected on the network, we're going to do what is called a Samba share. So you do backslash, backslash, retro pie, press enter, and we'll see where connected to the Raspberry Pi 3. So we go to ROMs and we go to NES and we see that it copied all the games from the USB thumb drive into the uh, micro SD. So we're good to go. Awesome.
So now let's go ahead and switch the input here, HDMI 1. Okay, great. So we're going to say start and we're going to say quit and we're going to say restart emulation station and we're going to do that. Okay, so now did that. We have the games. Great. But well, let's say you want to add some image art and descriptions and stuff like that. So what you do is you press start. Oops, press start. Come on. My controller is a bit finicky today. So you go scraper and then you say scrape now. And then you can say start. And then it's going to start scraping one by one by one. So here it says, like, for example, my first game here is Balloon Fight. So I'm going to press A and it's going to scrape it. So you have a long list of games. You got to do it for every single game in your list, basically. So I'll make a follow-up tutorial that uses the Stevens, uh, the Stevens Scraper, basically, which will do all this in one go, which is really nice. But that's a really um, more technical t tutorial. So we'll save that for a different time. So I'm just going to go down to here. I'm going to say stop for now. But you get the idea. So I'm going to go back. So here we see that this scraped it successfully. We got all this stuff right here. That's pretty cool. But all these other games don't have anything. So I'll have to scrape them later, basically. Or we'll save that for a future tutorial. And um, I think that's pretty much it. So let me see here. Yeah, so you here. And then you select your game. And then let me show you how the RetroArch uh, stuff works, basically. Um, okay. Oh, wow. Look at this guy. Okay, so let's say that you want to save, right? So on here, I'm going to say select and down. Okay. So I'm going to jump over here. I'm going to say select and up. And you'll see me go back to my save state. You see that? That's pretty cool. Um, if you want to access the RetroArch menu, so let's do select A. Here's a RetroArch menu. So you can go quick menu. Here you can change your save state slots, save, you know, save it here, you know, and do that or load. If you want to change your save state slots, you could on the fly you say select right to go up or select left to go down basically. And that's how that works. So that is today's video game tutorial. I know that's a pretty long tutorial for today, I think, but there's a lot of stuff, but it should get you going as quickly as possible. Like I said, if you guys have other ideas, I'll do some more follow-up tutorials to RetroPie, but I think it's a lot of fun, and uh, that's how you do it. So if you have any nitpicky questions, let me know. Leave a comment here on YouTube page, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.